Hi, welcome back to Cellarat TV with your host, the Cellarat, Addison Rex. Last time we were in the vineyard together, all the grapes were green. Now they're starting to turn red, so we're going to go into the vineyard and find out what that means. So you can see all of these grapes have pretty much turned purple by now. They're almost... <laughs> so you can see that most of these grapes have turned purple by now. The, the process of reddening the grapes, you know, everything in the wine making industry has a special term. Uh, the term's called veraison. People pronounce it differently. Veraison, I've heard. The French is veraison. But uh, in French, it means uh, the onset of ripening. Uh, we borrowed the word in English, kind of changed the definition a little bit. In English, it's defined as the change in the color of grapes from green to red. Um, so these grapes have set into veraison. And that's about, they're about 80% um, complete, you know, or 80-90% complete. When the grapes start to change color, that's when the ripening really starts to happen. The earlier growth phase is really just about the berry getting bigger and taking its full shape. Once it's taken, grown as much as it's going to, then it starts coloring. Um, the reason that it starts to lose its green color and change to red is twofold. Uh, the chlorophyll starts to break down in the skins. But then the other reason is that new um, molecules start to form color pigment molecules like uh, they're called anthrocyanins and you know there's a few more in there. Now these grapes, these grapes are really starting to taste like grapes. They're still a little sour, you know, they're not all the way there. But if you come out in the vineyard before now and taste these green ones, Mm. They don't taste like grapes at all. I cannot believe how quickly all of these grapes started to go through veraison. I mean, last week, like, there was one red berry on each of these clusters, and this week it's the exact opposite. There's only one green berry on all of them. It just hits, and then all of a sudden, boom, your whole vineyard turns from, you know, beautiful green to beautiful red in one week. So every week now, uh, the sugar is starting to... Every week now that the sugar is starting to accumulate, the bricks is going to go up about a degree and a half every week. So that's the percentage of the sugar to the amount of uh, solution juice in each berry. Uh, we typically harvest around 21 bricks. It depends on, so that's basically 21% sugar to water weight. Um, and it really depends on the varietal when we harvest, uh, if you want any residual sugar or not. So, you know, you can taste these and you can tell there's very little sugar in it, so the bricks is probably really low. Even though these are, are starting to redden, see this cluster is completely red, but um, it's, still, it's still not going to be ready to harvest for several more weeks. I mean, like, probably another month. Um, I was talking to the winemaker, Robert, the other day. You know, we've been having this really cold weather and uh, it's causing the grapes to ripen really slowly. But he said that that can actually be greatly beneficial because uh, if you have a slow ripening process, it allows the grapes to develop much more complex flavors. So it's not a bad thing altogether. The only worry is that they don't ripen all the way. So we can do certain things to try and promote the ripening process. We've trimmed away a lot of the lower foliage so a lot of leaves have been cut away. And um, that lets more heat get to the berries. And we did that in advance of the heat wave we had last week. And you can see, it, here's the, this is the morning sun side. If you look on the afternoon sun side, here's what happened, because of that heat wave. You know, all of the grapes have really raisin on this side. So, we were trying to 
you know, we were, we were trying to get to ripen and got a little too ripe. So, you know, the each vine has a limited amount of, amount of energy that it has to ripen the fruit. So what we want to do is we want to make sure that the energy gets channeled into, um, you know, the good berries, the best ones. So we really want to drop a lot of these raisins, taking fruit off of a vine to promote the to promote the quality of other, the, the remaining grapes. It's called dropping fruit. So we want to take that all that stuff off, all the raisining. Also, you know, if we do get early rains, which you know is another concern in the coming weeks, uh, these just you know promote. They're, you know, they're a great growing medium for mold because they kind of the juice gets on the outside of the berry. So it's also a good way to prevent mold. So you can see a lot of these clusters over here, you know, they're almost fully, fully um, through the process of raisin. Some of them though, like you can see this cluster right here, this cluster um, is almost all green. And there's, there's no way that this cluster is going to ripen fully by the time that those rains come and we're ready to harvest the rest of these grapes. And in the meantime, all it's doing is it's sucking energy that could be going into these other berries. So we want to take out all these berries. Uh, I was talking to Dan Sanchez. Uh, he's one of our vineyard, uh, he owns Alpachella Vineyard, which is uh, where we source all of our Sangiovese fruit from. Wonderful, wonderful fruit. And he was saying, he came out here, he was looking at these grapes, and he said that we should drop everything at this point that doesn't have 50% verasion. So just go through the vineyard, and anything that has half green berries, just drop it, because it's not going to get right by the end of the year. You know, I think one good point to make is that, you know, the, the wine industry is very different from other agricultural industries, because, you know, we get paid by the yield of the fruit, how much fruit we produce. But, you know, we're just taking this perfectly good fruit and tossing it for the sake of higher quality, you know, and I think that's pretty unique to this industry. So here at Deerfield, harvest has really already started and we hired on our whole crew again, so it's pretty exciting because, you know, the whole crew's here, starting to, you know, starting to make harvest happen. There's a lot of preparation work that needs to happen, um, mostly just cleaning all the equipment that we use for harvest. But you know, harvest is like a month late this year. It is really, really late for Sonoma Valley. So we have this whole crew hired on and you know, we're not gonna have a month of work for them to do. So probably they'll be coming out here in the vineyard and helping us um, drop some of this fruit. Just taking out all of the raisins and uh, the green clusters. And what that'll do is that'll help the rest of them to ripen nicely. And you know, it's like you can you can try you can try your best, but ultimately you're at the mercy of the weather. This raisining is a perfect example. Um, you know, we're trying to um, trying to ripen the berries because it's been so cold. And as soon as we take the, the canopy off, which protects them, boom, we get a heat wave. They all shrivel up. You know, so there's nothing. There's nothing you can really do except try your best, and uh, you know I think that uh, uh, if if we miss early rains this year, these berries are going to be delicious. So I hope you learned a little bit about veraison and uh, you know something about growing in the vineyard. But uh, see you next week on Cellar TV.